Hello everyone, welcome back to Gluestick FX. This tutorial is made for at SFX Macup on Instagram. They made my last tutorial fit on an Instagram, so this is just my little way of saying thank you. So the first thing we're going to do for this injury is just find a way in which your thumb already looks pretty unnatural. Um, I like to go for the last joint on the thumb because it looks really weird when you just sort of like push it out from the rest of your hand. So you're going to mark out whatever joint you want to create this look on. I'm using my lip liner still, which has never been used on lips. And then the first step of this wound is actually going to be piping out the bone that you're going to have exposed. I like to sculpt the entirety of the bone and then put whatever ripped flesh effect I'm doing around it. So the bone here, I just sculpted in two parts. There's the top and the bottom. So the top, you just lay out two little nubs next to each other. If you want to go for more like accuracy with, you know, biological structure, be my guest. I'm not that invested in making these things, you know, actually feasible injuries. So you're just going to use your sculpting tool. I still don't know what I'm using there, but uh, it works. And you're just going to smooth it down and make sure it's the right shape that you want. And you're going to repeat the process on the bottom. Just uh, mirror the top piece. This is roughly what finger joints look like. It's not actually what they look like, but it looks good on the injury. So, and I'm just going to speed up this footage here because you don't need to really see all that. <laughs> and so you have your little bones now. And what I like to do is take a little bit of water. This is just a shot glass that I used for making cookies. Actually, that one's never even seen alcohol. Take a little bit of water, dip your finger in it, and you can use it to smooth out the glue if your glue's a little rough. Mine tends to be these days just because of how cold it is, because I am in Australia. And that means that uh, it is heading into the middle of winter right now. So after you let that dry for a little bit, you just want to lay out your skin. So you start with where you want the leading edge, like the edge of the tear to be, and just pipe out a little line. And that's going to become your ripped skin. And then you just blend it down to your actual skin, which uh, is probably the longest process. Sometimes I just give up partway through because it can be super annoying to make the uh, blending actually look proper, but you know, if you want to dedicate a lot of time to it, you can make it look really good. I've done so like once or twice in the past. So you're just going to go through, you're going to blend it all down. And after you're done that, you will have your unpainted effect. So this is the entire sculpted base for your look. You've got your bone showing through, you've got your skin, which is torn up. And when you bend your thumb, it'll look like your thumb has just like broken at that or not broken, been split open, is that a better word? Maybe, I don't know, English is hard guys. And you can go through and smooth it down. I like to do that at basically every step of the process. After this, you are going to want to let it dry for a little bit. It's gonna take longer to dry if you use the water to slick it down. And if you have poor circulation like me, it will take even longer. <laughs> and if you're in Australia where it's currently winter, it will take even longer. So you can just be like me if you live in Australia and hold your thumb directly up to your heater. And um, I was balancing precariously on my couch for that. So the next step is to make it match your skin tone. And just like last time, I don't actually have foundation that matches my skin tone. So I'm using a blend of two liquid foundations and a super grungy makeup sponge that I should actually probably throw out soon. Whatever. It's good for this video. So I start with my darker one, which is a little more orange than my actual skin tone, but uh, it works sometimes. And then you just sponge it on. We're going to do this in high speed because uh, I'm pretty sure you guys know how to operate a makeup sponge. And if you don't, I don't honestly know if I can explain it. So after I've laid down my darker, oranger one, I take 
my super pale one, which none of my skin is that pale, and just apply that over top to make it sort of blend my skin tone better. As you can see, it still doesn't actually match my skin tone, but once you pour a whole bunch of fake blood on it, it'll look fucking fantastic. So, you know, it doesn't really matter if it looks <laughs> like your actual flesh. And you can see the little bones showing through. So then this is my blood. It is super thick right now. It's just something I got about a liter of for $7 around Halloween. I don't know where you can get fake blood or how you can make fake blood, but uh, whatever you've got, I'm sure will work just fine. And you want to start painting it in. I have a paintbrush that I've actually trimmed to uh, have a finer point so I can get in between the bones. And you can see I still didn't get in between the bones. I just sort of smeared blood all over them. And that's really what this step is. It's just smearing blood, having fun, go wild with it. This is your chance to, you know, be messy and just do whatever you want. The more blood you put on it, the less obvious any seams between the injury and your skin are going to be, and the less that it's going to matter that your foundation doesn't actually match your, match your skin tone. When people are just staring at the blood, they don't give a shit about anything else. And then you're going to want to, well, you don't have to, but I like to, take a paintbrush, dip the very end, sorry, toothbrush, dip the very end of it in blood, and just spray on some of that blood. I like it because it adds a layer of grit and um, it's just really fun to do. But make sure that you've laid down like a towel or something because I don't know about your blood, but mine stains like a motherfucker. So then you have your base injury. You could just leave it there, but I like to use needles. And as it says on the screen, be really careful because you can jab yourself with these and that's not fun. Um, I've never broken the skin laying needles into my injuries, but, uh, you could really easily. I have come very close a few times. So if you're laying the needles in, you're going to want to pass it through just the skin layer of your injury, not through the bones, which can be difficult if you've not given yourself a very thick skin layer. Um, I prefer to lay needles on injuries like this where it's pretty far from my actual flesh. But I have done it on facial wounds where it's just a tiny amount of glue and that takes a lot longer. So yeah, you do want to be really careful. You can accidentally jab yourself really easily. But if you take your time, don't rush. It will go just fine. And then you just have needles sticking through the glue and everyone will freak out. I think that was my first popular post was um, one that I put needles in and now I put them in everything because it looks fucking fantastic. So you're going to want to make sure that they're spaced out and sort of staggered so that it doesn't look too clean because we don't want our injuries to look clean. That would be boring. <laughs> so pass all your needles through and that is your final look. So yes, that is how you make a split thumb exposed bone needle look. Does that make sense? Anyway, thanks for watching my tutorial, guys. And if you have any requests, let me know. Bye-bye.